the other Lord that that there was a church asking the church a minister was preoccupied with the thoughts of how he was going to ask the congregation to come up with more money than they were expecting for repairs of the church and for the church was, and therefore he was annoyed to find out that his regular organist was sick and then he called a substitute to be brought in at last minute so the substitute wanted to know what to play so he said, here's a copy of the service. And he said, but you'll have to think of something to play after I make the announcement about the finances. During the service, the minister paused and said, brothers and sisters, we're in great difficulty. The roof repairs cost twice as much as we expected. We need $4,000 more. Can any pledge $100 more? Please stand up. At the moment, the substitute organ display, the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's see who's gonna stand up. Did right. God good? All the time. Yes. Uh, th this week we had my wife and I had some plane tickets that we had to use. It was use it or lose it. And and uh, uh, we were at, both of us are both of us are going to leave. I'm going for counseling. She's going for business. And and both of us, our, our schedules are exactly the same. And so so she was uh, uh both of us were right out this week or last week. And so I called the plane company and said, use it or lose it two weeks ago. And I said, well, can you give us two more weeks so we can at least get through this and not have to do homework while we're flying somewhere? They said, okay. And so then we're trying to go to Hershey, Pennsylvania. They want to charge us $300 more. For plane tickets, we already owned. And so uh, they drew us a circle and said, you can go anywhere in this circle for what you got. And so we looked and we found one place we'd never been. Uh, that was the church. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, yeah, uh, husband told his wife, said, we need to go somewhere you've never been before. She said, I like to go somewhere you've never been before. So he said, okay, let's go to the kitchen. We're <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting deeper in here, amen. Right? Deeper, deeper. No, actually, so we went to Puerto Rico for a couple of days. It was really good. I might not look like it because, it, it, honestly, I was really impressed. It was 80 degrees, 24-7. And the water was green. I was kind of scared to touch it because it was all green and world blue. But, but it was pretty cool. And so now I'm back. I flew back. My arms are kind of tired, but I'll be all right. <laughs> but this, this is what I worked on when I was in Puerto Rico. I was sitting on, I went out there and sat out there by the beach. And I looked out and I saw God's creation. And I saw all this amazing stuff. And there was forts built by Spain in the 1600s that were still there. And I saw the gunnels and saw the place and I just saw the lighthouse made out of the lake made in that fort and I saw all of this stuff and I saw all of this stuff. I said, this stuff has got, I mean, in the 1600s still cannot be destroyed unless you take a bomb to it. And I thought about think this stuff has got to sing of God's glory and God's praise and God's anointing. In the same way, that's why this, this, this came to me and so I started writing this down while I was out there looking at, of course, the green water kind of concern me. But other than the green water, these weren't brown, amen. So it's <laughs> green water out there and it weren't yellow, amen. It was green. <laughs> it was green. Still kind of crazy. So this, this song, this, this is what the Lord ministered to me while, while we were in this, this crazy, crazy uh, uh, place. Here we go. Let's see if we can get it here. Turn to Psalm 150. Turn to Psalm 150. Psalm 150, stand for the ring of the word. But I was flying on that plane at night. I looked out and I saw the glory of God everywhere I looked. But I was flying on the plane in the daytime. I could look out and see the islands and look out and see the stuff. And it was just amazing because it was just, all you could see is God's glory. And as I was up in the clouds and looked down, all I could see was clouds underneath me. And I said, God, you are just so magnificent. You are so powerful. It is amazing what you can do. God is so, so awesome. Amen? Amen. Psalm 150. Praise you, the Lord. My prayers, what you do? Whenever you see, uh, uh, y'all, whenever you see praise him, I want y'all to say praise him. Okay, y'all say it at the same time, all right? And praise you, the Lord. Say that too. Whenever you see praise, I want y'all to say that too. Praise, all right? Ready? Praise, praise you, the Lord. Lord. 
Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the temple and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him with the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high cymbals, uh, sounding cymbals, that everything that hath breath, praise the ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Says forth your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your girl of grace, your mercy. We know, God, we can do nothing without you. God, we have to have your help in every area of our life. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint each and every one of us. Help us to know that you're here with us in a real way, that you're working in our midst, that you got this. Lord, you got this, and we trust you with that. In the name of Jesus, we give this day to you, and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. You can be seated. They went to the, they went to the, uh, to the store. She told the man she wanted 50 gallons of milk. The man said, Why do you want 50 gallons of milk? She said, Because I have a very uh, rare skin disease. And the doctor told me that what would help it was to take a milk bath. So he looked at her and said, Okay, pasteurize. He said, No, just up in neck. <laughs> Eight reasons. I had seven when I had seven when I got off the plane when I got down there. So the guy came up, had eight. And I, now, 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 let me tell you something. Now. Reasons to praise the Lord. You can never quit counting the reasons to praise the Lord. So we're not going to try to, to be an encyclopedia here uh, to say why reasons to praise the Lord. But just eight reasons that, that they're concise. They, they develop. And so as they're concise and they develop, and then also if you use this in your life and develop this in your life, you'll find your life turning around. How many of you some turnarounds in your life? How many of you see God do some moving in your life? How many of you see God do something in your life that you can't do on your own? Amen. If you need that, I'm going to tell you, this right here is one of the ways to jumpstart. You know, a uh, 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 couple, couple of Christmases ago, I was walking through Lowe's. I had bought one of those great old big uh, uh, car, jump, car jumpers, big old thing, carried around waves a ton, and it seemed like the thing was going to last Less than a year and I had to buy another one. So I was always buying new ones. And so I had to come along Lowe's and I saw this little lithium battery. It was about a little bit bigger than a cell phone. And it said, This will jump the car, your jump starts your car 20 times. And I said, How can something that little jump start my car? But because I've been trying all these big old heavy things and they just kept wearing out, kept wearing out, I went on ahead and I bought this little thing. It was like $35. I said, Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Well, I never had to use it, so it was just sit there. But I noticed when I charged it, it stayed charged for a long, long time. For months at a time, it stayed at 100%. And then there come a time when I actually needed it. And the time I actually needed it was, first off, was to jumpstart then this truck. So I get the thing, and I'm thinking, this has got to be a joke. I'm kind of stuck. I don't have anything else, so I'm going to go ahead and use this thing. So I took out this thing a little bit bigger than a cell phone, and I hooked up the wires to it. And I grounded it in the truck, and as I grounded it in the truck, the truck hit. And I went, wow, that's amazing. And so I'm jumping around amazing, this little bitty thing, this, that little bitty thing, that little bitty small thing is a little bit bigger than a cell phone, how awesome it was. So then I stuck it in my car. Uh, a couple of months later, I forget to charge it back up, so it's like it's 70%. And so I go to DC shop. DC needed to jump start something there. And so I pulled it out again. And we jump start some, we jump start something three, four, five times <laughs> that day with that one little bitty thing the size of a little bit bigger than a cell phone. And so since then I bought more, put, put them in all the cars because it's not big, big and bulky. But I just got so amazed at how much power, this character we're coming to this, how much power. What I thought looked ridiculous. How much power, what I looked at as insufficient. How much power, something that honestly didn't even make sense, how powerful it was. Since then, there's been times I've used it over and over and over. You said it'll do 20, 20 jump starts off of one charge. I've gotten off of one charge. I'm telling you how many jump starts I got because I've jump started other people with it and I've jump started other things. It's amazing. But that little bitty jumper, if y'all go to Walmart, you can get it for $35, $45. They got bigger ones 
out for big trucks, but you get that thing. It's so awesome, but I'm not here to advertise that. What I'm here to say is, what didn't make sense, what didn't look like it had any power, what didn't have any ability, actually became one of the strongest things I had ever gotten. I was impressed, so impressed by this. Now, I'm going to tell you about something else in your life that helps jump support you. It helps keep you going. It gets you moving when you're out of juice. It gets you going when you don't think anything else will. You ain't got anything big and bulky. It's something that can be so small and so minor. But it is praise to our God. Amen? When you can't think of anything else, praise is the answer. There's times you can't pray your way out because you don't even know what to pray for. There's times where, of course, the Spirit moans within you. But at the same time, I'm here to tell you, you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You feel cluttered and clustered. And you feel just, just, just your whole mind is just shut down because of all that's going around. I said this down in the mighty army a few, uh, last week or week before last, that when you have stressful situations in your life, literally stress gets between you and your ability to think. It will shut your ability to think down. And remember, negative thoughts outweigh positive thoughts in your brain seven to one. So again, you've got these negative thoughts going, you have this, this, this stress going, your ability to think has been shut down, it's going out of here, and you're thinking, God, what do I do? I don't know what to say, I don't know how to pray, I don't know what to, how to say it, I don't even know how to reach up to you anymore. And what God says is, it's very simple, praise if we can learn that word, praise. You don't have to be have a license behind your name. You don't have to have so many degrees behind your name that you have to have somebody walk behind you and hold all your diplomas. No, 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 no. No. All you've got to do, even the smallest child, when they learn to praise God, the power that it possesses in their life, it will drive away the stress. It will drive away the pain. It will drive away a lot of things. I have an uncle right now, my uncle Ralph. Uh, he's in the hospital again. It's my last night in the hospital again. And they said that now he's got cancer in the lungs and had cancer in the throat and cancer down below, in the inside of him down below. And he's already outlived everybody that had this kind of cancer. He's outlived them all by years, 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 years. And he just keeps on going and keeps on going. But they told me last time I saw him, he said, Bubba, he said, I've always bounced back. He said, but you know what? Doctor says my lungs are about shot. He says, I honestly believe that I'm getting ready to go home. And he told me that was, that was a couple of weeks ago. His son called me last night and said, I put him back in the hospital. And he started crying. He said, you know what? I think this time, this time, it's going to get the best of daddy. But I remember talking to him just, just the other week. And I said, Uncle Ralph, how do you feel about all this? You know what he said? He said, I'm going to praise God if I stay here. He said, I'm going to praise God also if I go over there. He said, matter of fact, I would rather be with God. He said, but until he's ready for me, I'll be okay here. He said, but when I go, don't wait for me. He said, because I'm going to a better place. I'm going to something so powerful. There's praise all over the place. It's amazing. He said, he said, I'm concerned for my kids. I'm concerned for those I leave behind. He said, but for me, he said, don't worry about it. He said, because I know where I'm going. I know what's got a hold of me. I know what i got a hold of, and I know what I trust. And God's got this. Amen. He says, so I'm just going to praise him. The last thing you do what that, you are praising the Lord. So praise can help you even in the, the darkest of all hours. Let's talk about praise. Now praise is in the Bible 300 times uh, uh, or over. It's in different, many different ways. But the main way that is the way, main way that praise is written in the Bible, this is I think 90 times it's written. Uh, it's, it's, here's the expression now. First of all, praise is an expression. Now, as an expression, I was thinking about something. Uh, uh, as an expression, it can be limited. Listen carefully. As an expression, it can be limited. Why can it be limited? Watch this. The Bible says that the, the, the hallelujah is hallel, which means to boast, to celebrate, or to make big. And then the second word to hallelujah is yah. Yah or Yahweh means the strong one, the self-existent one, the powerful one. So actually, hallelujah is the same. It's the only word that's the same in every language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise be the strong one. Whenever you're saying hallelujah, you're saying praise to the strong one. I'm going to make the strong one big, the big one, the strong one, the powerful one. I'm singing praises up to him. So but remember, it can be limited. And the reason it can be limited is because many times that word by itself is reactive. 
It's a reaction. How many times have we gone down the road and with, honestly, had not even been praying? And all of a sudden, God does something for you. And you go, well, hallelujah. Amen. It's just reactive. You know, to a child of God, we, do, we, 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 we get reactive with that. But let me ask you a question. When you, when you, when you go through something and, and the circumstances change, do you always want to keep on saying hallelujah? Glory to God. I have to admit, I don't always do that. I have to catch myself. I have to stop myself because David Linton gets in David Linton's way. David Linton wants to argue and complain. David Linton will say, I don't understand why this is happening. But if you can stop, not just be reactive and say hallelujah or praise be the strong one. That's the expression. Let it become an attitude. Because when it becomes an attitude, conditions don't affect my praise. My praise affects my conditions. That's Paul Silas in prison. They're in the deepest part of the prison, the worst part of the prison. They were in the bottom. Uh, and it is known that in that part of the prison, there was, there, was, there was rotting flesh still in that part of the prison. Uh, a prison. There was maggots down in that part of the uh, a prison. There was very little sunlight down in that part of the prison. Their hands and feet were in stocks, which means they could not move around. They were stuck. They had been beat. They couldn't even take care of their wounds. They were there in that bad, were the worst of parts. Couldn't take care of themselves. They couldn't take care of their wounds. Now all they could do is in the dark talk to each other and talk to God. Now let me ask you a question. If you find yourself in that condition, what would you do? Would you be praising God? I'm not going to raise your hand. This is a, this is a rhetorical question. So please don't let anybody say what you would do. But just a, what, would you thank God? Would you be praising God? Would you be celebrating His goodness while you're in the bottom of this place where you smell death? You smell rotting flesh. There's maggots everywhere. They're, they're on you. And, and it's known that once you get put in these stocks down here, it is known in those conditions that gangrene will start to sit in to your wounds. So can you imagine? They're in this, all this going on with them. If it had been reactive, they'd have been in trouble because they wouldn't have said a word. But it was an attitude they contained. And because it was an attitude in their life, when they're in the worst possible moment after being beat for a look, and they weren't even supposed to be beat, they were Roman citizens. They were not supposed to be beat, especially in public. And so all this stuff's going on. There were a bad trial, a, a bad everything going on. But all they did was was, was bring a, 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 a comfort to, to a girl that was possessed with a demon. So here we go. Because they had this an attitude. Remember, if praise is an attitude, watch this, I love it. Praise is my attitude. Conditions don't affect my praise, but my praise affects my conditions. Now I'm proactive. So uh, here's my challenge for you for the rest of the week. I'm, just try it. Just try this if you don't mind. Try this exercise all week long. And come back next week and tell me if you see the difference. As your day gets up, you start thanking God. As your day starts moving forward, you start thanking God. As things get looking rough, you start thanking God. Try thanking God. Try praising God ahead of time instead of behind time. Instead of being reactive, be proactive. Instead of being just an expression, let it become an attitude. And if you can let it become an attitude, you start praising God before the circumstances happen. Then when the circumstances happen, you will affect the circumstance versus the circumstance affecting you. Very, very powerful thing. And once you start praising God, here's something you'll find out. Do you know that a complainer is contagious? Have you ever sit around somebody that complains all the time? Can't get away from them. Either they're your boss or they work for you or you're married to them. Did I say that? Hold on, I'm going to change that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Complain all the time. Complain about everything. There was a lady that worked with me uh, at a fountain, an engineer, and, and, and we worked in, a, in, a, in, our, in our office. There were multiple engineers in the office. My department sat behind me, but there was another department that sat over here. And so, so I remember uh, one, of the, one of the design engineers who was a Christian, and I never heard him say a negative word about anybody. I never heard him complain. Never. He was always upbeat. He was always chipper. He, just, he was just one of those kind of guys you like being around. And one day this woman that worked for me that was about as negative as negative could be, she gets up and she starts, from the time she walked in, she'd do something on my desk and complain. 
She complained all the way back and talked to every engineer and complained about something to every last one of them. She sits down and she's trying to do something else. She just complained, complained, complained. And I'm sitting here in this kind of I'm going. Mm. And she said, all those complaints were killing me. I thought I was like being shot. Oh, oh. She found out and I said, I was calling the lady's name, won't call her name out. I called the lady's name and I said, well, you know what? I think they need you down on the floor. And she said, okay, I'll go. And she gets up and complains all the way out the door. When she, when she finally gets out the door, the guy who never said a bad word about anybody, never complained, always upbeat, always chipper, hollers out in front of everybody and goes, this water's too wet. <laughs> I said, I know that she's really getting bad when she can get all of us turned around. Hey, me and we were all about to have a fit. I'm glad I sent her down instead of keeping her down with us. We'd all been ready to hurt somebody. Amen. So, so watch this. Not only is an expression, an expression can change, but it's an attitude. Uh, an expression uh, depends on the conditions at times, but then when you're being proactive, it's an attitude, and the conditions will be subject to your praise, but also it's contagious. If you can learn to open your mouth when you don't feel like it, when you can learn how to praise God when you don't feel like it, when you can learn how to tell God I love you when you don't feel like it, if you can learn how to praise God when the worst of things are happening, when you feel like letting it rip, letting it roll, if you can learn to praise God, and I need to learn how to practice this too, because sometimes it just gets overwhelming, and you sit there with overwhelming, and instead of praising God, you're saying, God, why, why, why? Instead of saying, God, why, why, why? Why don't you say, God, hallelujah, praise be the strong one. Y'all try that. Hallelujah, praise ye the strong Come on. Hallelujah. Praise ye the strong one. One more time. Hallelujah. Praise ye the strong one. Y'all start feeling better already. You hear this? It automatically makes you feel better. That little bit, that little bit charger. Cracking carbs. The same way. It doesn't make sense. That little bit of thing with that lithium battery. It shouldn't be charging and making and cracking up carbs. But it is. The same way that little bitty praise can change your whole day. Entirely change your whole day. So uh, if I can keep you on today, I want to just go through four of the eight. I'll go through the other four next week. First off, well, why do we need to praise God? There you go. It's the right thing to do. Can you think of anything better to do to God than to praise Him? Do you know that the only thing, there's only two things you can give God? There's only two. Only two. Did you know that? Number one is your heart. He doesn't demand it. Satan does. He doesn't demand your heart. He lets the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts you, but if you are a free moral agent, it's up to you to accept him or not. And when you accept him, then you give your heart to him. That is a gift to him. The angels around the throne are rejoicing when you give your heart to God and you become his child. So that's one thing I can give God. And how do you get, what do you give to somebody that's got everything? Number one, give your heart. But number two, what do you give somebody that's got everything? Especially God is praise. Because praise, again, is something I can give him. Out of all things he does for me, I can give back to him. I can't give him everything except my heart. I can give him my heart, and I can give him my praise. And when I give him my praise, it is something that genuinely comes from me. It's something that is mine alone that I give to him alone. We can all be sitting in here. We can all praise at the same time. But you know what? God's listening to my praise. Amen. Specifically my praise. Specifically your praise. And it's going up because number one, it's the right thing that we ought to do. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it, it says that everything, that everything, we just read it, that hath breath. Praise the Lord. That every come on, y'all do it again. Hallelujah. Go ahead and try it. Hallelujah. Do a little better than that. Y'all sound like y'all standing in line for room for now. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you this is gonna make you feel better all week. It's gonna make your day go by better. It's gonna make your week go by better. It may not change anything exactly how it might gonna happen, but it'll change the way you react to it. Amen. says, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Psalm 156, watch this, I love this. Let everything, all creation, all creation. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Everything, all creation, that have breath, that have the 
is alive. Everything, all creation that is alive, that has breath, brag on God. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 and 12 that the mountains and the hills break forth and sing praises unto God. The trees clap their hands. Praise them to God. The animals, the firmament, it all praises God. Psalm, Psalm 19 says the heavens uh, tell of his glory and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Wow, just looking out and seeing all that stuff. Psalm 66 again, all the earth worships you. The trees, whenever I see the trees bending over, I can think of every time since I read that years ago, or the trees are clapping their hands. The trees are worshiping God. Wow. Isn't it an awesome thing? David said, seven times a day, I stop and shout praises for the way you keep running. Everything right. Oh, listen, isn't that cool? Seven times a day, I stop and shout praises for the way you keep everything running right. Psalm 119, 164. So now I want you to think about this as praise. Now listen carefully. Listen to this. Watch this. Number one, God deserves it. He deserves praise. Because he's the man. He's the creator. He's got things going the way it's going. God protects us when things have gone crazy. God is there for us anytime, anytime, day or night. We don't have to try to get a party line. We don't have to wonder about if our cell phone battery is charged. We don't have to wonder about whatever we need in God. He's there. So number one, God deserves it. Not only that, but God desires it. Remember, it's the only thing that we can give Him is our heart and our praise. Our heart and our praise. Thank you, God. He, he, he deserves it. He desires it. He delights in it. The angels are around the throne 24-7 shouting, Holy, 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 and just praising God all the time. You know, there's a lot of places we go into. You can't necessarily hear praising going on. Amen? There was one thing I liked about, liked about Puerto Rico is they like Latin music. And everywhere you went, the Latin music was going on. And, and the pigeons, I liked it because there's a restaurant there and it was open air. And the pigeons were landing on the tables. I know, nothing like here. And now that music was going on. And I'm there, I said, look at that pigeon. He's going. And so I got there by that pigeon and I was doing it with him. Amen. I, I like that music here all the time. Wherever we went, you could hear music playing. Music was playing everywhere. And everybody walked around and said to be dancing. And it was like a big old, more like a party party, but everybody had this wonderful attitude. The attitude was amazing, uh, what we saw there. And I thought about, you know, if that's how it is here, can you imagine how it is in heaven? I heard one of the songs, it was getting to it, and I just started, uh, I told Linda, I said, can you imagine us doing praise and worship that style? And that song was going, the drums were beating. I don't know what they were singing, because they were singing Spanish. They couldn't sing, I didn't tell them what they were singing. But I was singing praises unto God. And so I was singing it, praise be to God, hallelujah, strong one, hallelujah, strong one. And she said, you thought this is world hacker in this. Now come on, keep it away. Uh, all right. And he dwells in it. Watch this, I love this. You see, when we praise, listen carefully. When we praise God, we call unto him. You can't complain your way to him. But you can praise your way to him. There's been a lot of times I've tried to complain my way to him. Guess what? It doesn't work too good. You try. See what you think. Amen. So watch this. First off, it's the right thing to do. God, the Bible commands it. God says he wants it. Amen. Number two. Watch this. Praise is where God lives. Did you know that? I heard him say, well, I haven't been able to get in touch with God lately. I just can't seem to get a hold of him. I'm going to tell you how to do it every time. You may not feel him every time, but this is how you get in touch with him every time. Remember, God's presence is everywhere. God is always everywhere. He's even, listen, it says, the Bible says, according to the Psalms, that even if I go into hell and make my bed, he's there. But the people in hell don't see, don't feel his presence because there's an unknown presence and there's an unknown presence of God. But when you begin to praise him, listen, when you begin to praise Him, His presence is there. And I guarantee you to praise Him enough, you will feel His known presence. So, so, so watch this. The Bible says in Psalm 23 and 3, this is so awesome. I love it. Psalm 23 and 3. Now turn this thing off. There you go. And thou art holy, setting on the praise of Israel. 
the Chinese were trying to uh, 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 figure this out, how to do translation. And when they tried to use this or talk about this, they couldn't find the exact words to translate word for word. So the Chinese, as they and I tried to put some Chinese up here, but all I kept getting was the symbols. And we didn't need the symbols. We needed the actual translation. But the translation is, when they translated this, here's what they said. When we praise God, we build Him a throne upon which to sit. When we praise God, we build Him a throne upon which to sit. So, so, so God is enthroned on or means to dwell, to inhabit. So watch this. This is that. I'm almost through. I told you it won't be long. Watch this. <coughs> this is so awesome. This came to me sitting outside, looking up in the sky, hearing people celebrate. And just knowing how powerful, powerful God was. Watch this. When you begin to praise God, when you begin to pray, not me, you. We're talking about this is individuals. Individuals. Because there can be two people sitting there, one having a great day, one having a bad day. One praising God, one not praising God. One seeing God live, and one seeing not seeing God at all. This is individual. This is you by yourself this week. It doesn't matter who you're around, how many devils you seem to be working with. Listen to this carefully. Very, very much careful. Listen, listen. God has moved into a position of honor to be praised and worship. When we begin to praise Him, watch this. When we begin to praise Him, we put Him in front where He belongs. Not only we put Him in front, it puts us, listen, listen. We put Him in front and we set Him on the throne to worship. So next time you're having a bad day, next time you're having a hard day, learn to praise God and watch God move from the back to the front. Remember, He dwells, He lives, He sits on our praise. So, so that's a very powerful thing. He's worshiping. So now, when I do this, now He comes to us, He responds. When God sees us praising Him, whether you feel it or not, God responds. God always, I'll say always, God always responds because the promise is He dwells on the praises of His people. He sits on a throne of praise before His people. So, if you praise God, say, I haven't felt God lately, praise Him. Well, I haven't talked to God lately. Read His book because there He is talking back to you. All right, read His book. He'll be talking to you. If you want to get in a position where you can feel Him, where you can experience Him, learn to praise Him no matter how bad it feels. Remember Paul and Silas, couldn't get much lower than they were. They praised God and God rocked that place. Amen. So, so praise is number two. First off, it's the right thing to do. Number two, praise is where God lives. You want to know where God lives? On your praise. That's simple. You can't get any simpler than that. You want to feel God, praise Him. You want to experience Him, praise Him. It's just like that little bitty jumper cable box, that little thing inside of a cell phone. I didn't think there was anything to it. Since then, I've used that thing so many times. It was a little bit of charge. It still cranks every car I've ever put it to. Why? Because the power is there. The power is not in the size of it. The power is on the inside. The same way. Your praise, it may not sound like much, but God's not looking at the, the size, the outer size of your praise. He's looking on the inside of you. You learn to praise Him. Praise is where God lives. Number three. I'm almost through. I'm already, I'm already halfway through. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> All right. All right. Number three. Number one is the right thing to do. Write that down. Praise is the right thing to do. Everything has breath. Praise the Lord. I don't want trees. I don't want rocks taking my place. He said, if you want praise, the rocks will cry out. All right. Well, what's the right thing to do? Number two. Praise is where God lives. Number three. I love this. Here. What's that? Key and hope. It's a key. Amen. So what does what does using a key do? Unlock. It unlocks it unlocks the door. It unlocks something. It gives you access. So watch this now. This is so awesome. Watch. Praise enables access to God. He tells us very simply. This is so simple. Psalm 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. I'm not going to ask you, because it may, it may look bad. How many came in here today? Like that. Thanksgiving and praise. Or did you say, oh no, I've got to go to church again? Oh, another service. 
Sunday, got to go to another church service. I can't wait for it to get over. I wish you'd be quiet so we can go ahead and go to McDonald's and meet the Baptist. God, God loves it when you come in here with thanksgiving. Thank you, God, that I can come to your house and praise on your heart. God, I thank you that I can praise you. I thank you for taking care of us all week. I thank you, God, that you've worked on our, our behalf all week. I thank you, God, that you're just God. I just thank you for being God. You're powerful. You're holy. You're magnificent. I cannot believe how good you have been to me, God. So watch this now. First off, watch. When we praise God, we move Him in a position of honor to be praised and to be worshipped. He responds. Now watch this though. When we, when we start praising God, this is so awesome. When we begin to praise God, not only do we put Him in front so that He can be, so he can be on that throne to be worshipped, but we're moved in a position of humility to bring praise and worship. Now, I step back. You know, it's amazing. It's so amazing how, how if you're working, have you ever been working on something and you didn't know exactly what you were doing or you worked all you could do on it as far as you can go and now somebody comes up that you believe knows more about it or knows how to do it, what do you do when they come up? I remember a rescue squad. You get up there. I remember I'd come up to my dad's house when I was going to my dad's house and there's people out in the middle of the road just before Danny's house. And there's a lot of people on the road. I look and have to see a car flipped over uh, uh, in a ditch. And, and, and so I pulled over the side of the road. And Danny saw me coming. I was, I was fresh EMT at the time. We the rescue squad. Danny saw me coming. And they'd already been to the car. People were looking in the car. And the guy was unconscious. He was laying in the car. And, and, the, and the car, like I said, was flipped over. And he was all in it. And, 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 and they didn't know what to do. They were just all kind of standing around. They were hollering at him and whatever. When they saw me coming, my daddy said, y'all back up, he knows what to do. And so he did like this, and I come running down there, and, it, and he just pushed everybody back. I said, there you go, son, he needs your help. You see, wouldn't it be cool if in your own life, you can learn to praise God, put him up front, and watch this. Now I'm going to praise God a while, I'm going to step back, y'all step back, let's let this hit God more. Get out of the way and let God work. Step back and let God take care of this. Step back and let God do what He can do best. Amen. But I, when I put Him up front, build, build a throne for Him to sit on, then I get in the back. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Somebody say it. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Amen. If you get out of the way, then you can watch God work and He'll do something. So watch this. This is just cool. So, so, so now, the worst He comes to us, then we, then we come to Him. We respond by getting out of the way. And then one more, and we're, we're closing. I promise. I love this. Can anybody read it out loud? God. Trust me. I got this. I can't, I couldn't, I can't tell you. How many people? I was only there for a couple of days. It was just a quick trip, just something that we could you know, take care of the airplane tickets, but also uh, to get a little break for a couple of days. It was only a couple of days, but I, I cannot begin to tell you how many people I ministered to when I was in Morgan County. And if God sent me somebody that couldn't speak English, God sent me an interpreter. I remember the night that the power went out. The power went out that morning at 9 o'clock. The stores had generators, but the power went out. We were standing a little bit in breakfast. The power went out, and so it stayed out till 11 o'clock that night. And it weren't like here. You didn't have CPNL or, or, or the car company saying, we're going to call you, let you know by text message uh, how soon it'll be before you get your power up. You didn't see trucks riding around. You just heard sirens and heard stuff. You didn't know what was going on. I kind of felt kind of weird in this place and didn't have any idea what was happening. I asked people, well, how long the power going to be out? And they said, that was their reaction. And I said, well, this happened often. They went, oh, yeah. And I said, well, uh, what do you do about it? They said, what we're doing now, you walk around with candles. So okay. And I wound up in this little room. I was going to go somewhere. 
But instead, I sat over the, on the porch with these people that were standing. This been back there from Italy. There were some from Italy. There was people there from uh, 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 Ireland. People there from London. There were people there from everywhere because that's just a little vacation spot. People come there anyway. But all these people from all these countries, and they're sitting there. And all of a sudden, the person from Chile looked over at me and just opened the door. Just opened the door. And all I was going to do was just say a little something and keep my mouth shut. Y'all know I do that a lot. Just a little something. Yeah. <laughs> and so I said a little something. And I looked around and tears were coming to people's eyes. And the person from Chile said, how can this be? And I just kept talking about God. And then the Italian said, said you must remember, you're talking to a preacher. <laughs> he liked that. I said, no, it's not me. It's God. And he kept wanting more and more and more. And so we spent an hour out there ministering to all these people. And I said, God, this is so amazing. Because where else would I have the opportunity at this point to sit down with people from all over the countries and sit there and minister? And look, when I got off the plane, the lady came come pick us up. She heard Linda and said, oh, you have such a beautiful accent. And then she heard me and she said, where are you from? <laughs> I said, excuse me? I'm from North Carolina. She said, I cannot comprehend your gringo language. I said, but she's a gringo too. He said, no, she got a lovely language. I don't understand you. She, she, she said, you go, she says, uh, I said, like, go to my She said, boom. <laughs> so again, who would have ever thought it? You're in this place, lights go out, and your people are stuck. Nobody can go anywhere. And there you are ministering to all these people at this table. Man, it's just amazing how God is. God is so awesome. So, so awesome. Look, so again, again, that's one, of the, that's one of the things I kept telling them. Trust God. He's got this. Trust God. He's got this. So I see this. The, four, the fourth thing. If you're having a hard time, if, 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 you're, if you're really going through a rough spot right now, if things are really, really bad for you, sometimes, listen, listen, there is times we sing it today. God, God, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I ain't today. I don't understand why I'm going through this. But Lord, uh, how a broken heart is, my broken heart is part of your plan. But God, I thank you. I'm going to trust you. Thy will be done. But watch this. I, listen, God may allow the broken heart. But listen, I may have the broken heart, but it's up to me what I do with it. Am I going to let it drive me to despair? Or am I going to let it drive me to greatness? So, so, so watch this. We all, get, we all get broken hearts. We all get times we're frustrated. We all get times where we just can't take any more. We all get times where we're just overloaded. But you know what? Again, if we can stop and realize, I may not can do anything about my situation, but I can do things about how, how I see it and how I respond to it. So, so I see this. Again, he says, trust me. I got this. Now, I'm going to trust these batteries. There you go. <laughs> Watch this. Isaiah 61 and 3. As for those who grieve in Zion, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes. To anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow. To wrap them in victory and joy and praise instead of depression and sadness. You know what this is actually saying? I mean, of course you've got to trust God. And God's going to take care of this. It's also speaking of Calvary. Well, like Jesus did at Calvary. But it's also speaking of England. Some of these people were going into captivity. Some of these people were coming out of captivity. Some of these people had lost everything. Some of these people were having to rebuild over again. Some of these people had their lifestyles had entirely <coughs> changed entirely from what they were used to. So watch this. Here's the, this is what I'm learning. I'm learning. Amen? You know, one of the new phrases I like to say a lot, a lot of times is, I would look, here's what I did. And people have to stop and think about it. You know, you used to say, when I grow up, I want to be just like him. My new phrase is, when he grows up, I want to be just like him. And I watch them. They walk around and go, when he grows up, I want to be just like him. And they're going, huh? And I'm, oh, of course, the person's beside them go, well, he'll never grow up, so you'll never be like him. <laughs> watch this. Here he goes. Watch. I'm learning this every day. Change your focus. Oh, here we go. This is worth the price of admission. Change your focus. 
and it will exchange your outlook. What are you looking at? What are you holding on to? What have you got? What's this preconceived ideas you've got? What's this stuff going on in your mind? The way you think things should be. You think things should be a certain way because they're not a certain way. All of a sudden it grieves you or it aggravates you or it puts you in a rough spot. Change your focus. Exchange your outlook. I remember mama, when she was diagnosed with cancer, and it was looking well, right, right, it wasn't cancer to start with. She was actually was diagnosed with, with, with uh, a diabetes. And the diabetes was doing all kinds of things to her, taking out her eyes, her heart, her kidneys, and just eating her up. And she, she had a cardiac heart disease, so, so every time they tried to fix her heart, it just kept going back bad again. And so for like 10 years, her mom kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then she lost her legs up to here, both of them. She had you know, all this stuff. This was bad. Uh, all these heart, major heart surgeries and, and on dialysis, her peritoneal dialysis, which you do at the house, she had she done it for five, she had it five times a day. And so I remember all this stuff that was going through. And I remember mama, this happened just about the time daddy was going to retire. Mama's mind was made up that when daddy retired, they were going to travel some. Daddy was going to open a shop and work on cars and work on stuff right there behind the house. Everything was all planned. Mama was going to do this and this and this. She had all this stuff planned that she was going to do. And then she got sick and sicker and sicker and sicker. Before Mama got sick, to be honest with you, she had a negative attitude about a lot of things. And so here she is with this negative attitude about a lot of things. And I just talked to her, Mama, you don't need to be negative about this. Mama, you got to trust God, blah, blah, blah. Mama, 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 you can't be negative about this. But as she began to get sicker, I noticed something. There was a strange thing taking place inside of her heart. Because as things got bad, I mean really bad, so bad, and I watched my mama. She nobody else was even there. It was me and my mom's her faith buddy. There was times she would let she would just let it out when I was there and nobody else was there. So I won't even go into it because I'm not gonna uh, talk about it. But the saying is, I knew things. I knew how mama felt about things. But you know what? I watched God give her the oil of gladness instead of warning. Because instead of it looking like everything was being taken away from which is actually how everybody looked at it to begin with. Everything being taken away from her. After a couple of years of this sickness and not getting better but getting worse, she kept looking at it as being taken away and complaining. And she looked at it as something precious to be beheld and to hold. And all of a sudden, Mama's attitude changed about a lot of things. She got so positive. She got so, the anointing of God just flowed on that woman. It was amazing. She'd be in the hospital. She spent the last couple years of her life, 70 to 80% of her life, in the hospital. We, the last few years she lived, we spent every major holiday at the hospital with her. You talk about being Columbo and being superstar, try putting collars down your arm, coat sleeve, and, and, and putting... Uh, Stuff him down this sleeve and get your brother and put turkey down that sleeve and somebody put something down that sleeve and we go in intensive care to see mama on Thanksgiving and pull out all this stuff to have Thanksgiving meal with mama in intensive care. Nurse come in and said, you know you're not supposed to be doing this. I'm going to go tell her. And I gave her a pledge. So you're going to, I said, here. She held it in her hand and said, are you going to eat or are you going to talk? And she said, I'm going to eat. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> but mama looked at it as time to be cherished everywhere she went from that time on she <coughs> ministered to people it was a door of opportunity to minister to people and I've never in my entire life seen this happen before ever doctors would come to our house and sit for hours sit at our house for hours just to talk to mama not about her sickness just to talk to her to talk to daddy and as God is my witness Mama didn't have any insurance. Daddy dropped her just before she got sick and she couldn't get in. She had a little bit of Mickey Mouse boss that paid $1,000 a year and that was it. She had like five open heart surgeries and all her organs, the stuff that was done to her organs and her, her 
kidneys all this, but then he owed hundreds of thousands of dollars. The doctor came to visit my mama one day and looked over at my daddy and he said, David, how are you going to pay for this? Daddy said, a little bit of time. I'll get it paid off eventually if I live long enough. And the doctor said, let me take care of something. He come back and asked Daddy again, said, how are you going to pay for all this? Your wife's only got two months to live. We fought, we fought a good fight, but she's only got two months to live. Daddy said, Daddy said, I'm going to stay home with her the whole two months. I'm not going to leave her. He said, how are you going to pay for it? He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to pay the best I can. The doctor looked at my daddy, and when this, my daddy owed this doctor several hundred thousands of dollars. The doctor looked at my daddy. I heard it. He said, if you're that kind of man, consider my bill paid in full. And a couple weeks later, I got a mail. A thing in the mail said, paid in full. But he still had all these other doctors, the hospital, the eye doctors, all this. So he come to the house. And he gave Daddy this big old slip. Said, Bill, you owe nothing to anybody. And said, if anybody comes to you anymore with any kind of bills, you bring it to me. Everything is paid in full. Now, you know where I think where that came from? I was God, of course. But at the end, that attitude my mama had. She praised God. She praised God. She praised Him for everything. She praised Him. She let every time she got a chance, she talked about God. She was, people get around here and go, we come in here to minister to you and you minister to us. She said, the doctors would come in and walk out of the room crying because she would minister to them. She learned. Instead of, watch this. Instead of staying locked up in your sickness, let what's in you come out in praise. And watch what God can do. Amen. So watch this. When we praise God, this is what I'm going to end on. I'm ending right here. When we praise God, He comes to us. When we when we uh, when we praise Him, we go to the throne. He comes to us. When we go to His gates with thanksgiving, and intercourse of praise, we come to Him. <coughs> and when we praise Him, God changes us. How many need some change? Amen. Come on, Grady, say.